Good evening, traders. It is Wednesday evening, December 4th, and it's time for our weekly video. Let's see what we've got going. We had a holiday shortened week last week, Thanksgiving, so we didn't have a lot of picks to take a look at. So we're going to review those trades in a little bit. Let's see what the market did. We had some long tails under bodies right here, and we had a nice rally through that resistance level. And then we had a nice big drop Monday on news that Trump might not be as anxious to sign a U.S.-China trade truce. Today, that's changed. Everybody's happy. Yes, we're trying to hammer out the details, so the market has rebounded. We were looking for this dip, and last week we bought the VXX on the notion that we could get a little bit of a drop after Trump signed the bill supporting Hong Kong protesters. Yeah, there's another bill that's going to be hitting his desk, and that has to do with Muslims being persecuted in China. And when he signs that bill, I really don't think China's going to like it. Here's the deal. We want to pull back on a non-U.S.-China trade deal because it really doesn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Both countries have good economic growth. Both countries are raking in billions of dollars in tariffs. There's no real incentive for them to do a trade deal right now. Plus, I think Trump is getting some pretty good play out of his anti-China rhetoric right now. It seems to be resonating with voters. He does not want to roll over and look weak. So he's not going to repeal all of the tariffs, which that's what China wants him to do. Not going to happen. So I see them kind of muddling around. But here's the prize. The prize is the USMCA. Right now, the Democrats have been trying to impeach Trump. Voters are not buying it. Democrats are losing face in the polls. They're worried that they might have to sign the USMCA because Americans right now want Congress to do something that's going to help our healthcare situation, our economic growth, or infrastructure. And it sounds like the Democrats are going to sign the USMCA trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. We do four times the trade with Mexico and Canada that we do with China. I'm talking about exports to Mexico and Canada. So it's big. It could add 1% to our GDP. That's what I think fuels a, a year-end rally. And I think it could get signed. Nancy Pelosi is indicating that they're trying to work out the deal and they want to sign it. So I think any dip is a buying opportunity in here. We had the pullback this week. We had this long tail right here at the 307 level, which identified as a minor support level 305 is a bigger support level 302 is a huge support level that's the breakout where all this started right in here i don't think we're going to get back to 302. this was bullish speculators getting flushed out the last two days and you could see how buyers came right in bullish hammer follow through buying today so will we slingshot to a new market high no not without a usmca deal but if we get that, could be good. We also have the FOMC statement next week. The Fed's going to stand pat. We've had a couple of economic numbers come in this week that were a little soft. ISM services came in today. It was a little bit light. Nothing too concerning. We also had ADP, which came in at 67,000. That was quite light. That's a little bit concerning. But last week we had a strong GDP number. We had good durable goods numbers. So I think everybody's going to look past that weak ADP number and not worry too much about it. We should see a nice year-end rally, especially if we get that USMCA+. Plus. Next week, England's going to hold their vote. The polls suggest that Boris Johnson's going to gain seats. That means that Brexit is on track. There will be an agreement that takes market uncertainty out of the equation as well. So into year end, I am bullish. I was looking for this pullback. I was hoping for something more substantial down to maybe the 305 level. We didn't get it and we bounced immediately, which tells me the bid is still there. Folks, we need to stay on the long side. We have to focus on the long side of the market. We can distance ourselves from the action by selling out of the money bullish put spreads. That's what I suggest doing. And I would consider doing that on a moderate basis. So I wouldn't go full out like we were back in here. But I would put at least a half a position on here with the idea that if we do get another pullback and if a U.S.-China trade truce does not materialize and we pull back, that you've got some 
dry powder that you can use to add more bullish put spreads on. So I do like the strategy right here. I would be fairly aggressive with it. So that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight. Before I get started, I want to mention that everything that you see tonight, you can get at oneoption.com. This is the research product that we offer. It includes tonight's video, it includes the day trading video, it includes the chat room, it includes the pre-open market comments, all the market indicators within the chat room. The research product is $59 per month. And on the homepage, if you continue to scroll down, you'll see that there is a free trial for Option Stalker. That's the software that we use to find everything. During your trial, you can try it free for the rest of the month, and that includes unlimited stock and option trades included in that free trial so you won't pay anything for commissions click get started to find out more about that program also if you're watching this on youtube please subscribe to the youtube channel turn on your notifications so that when i post the morning videos you'll be notified now sometimes like tonight i actually post the swing trading video so this is a freebie. You will be able to watch it tonight. You'll be able to watch it real time and take advantage of the same trades as members do. For many of you, you focus on swing trading. So let's get started. Let's find some trades. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and give it a thumbs up if you like the content. So I went through my searches tonight and came up with a fair number of candidates. So first we're going to go into the scanner. And we're going to take a look at the heavy buying search. Lots of good candidates in here. So I'm not looking for anything that's too far out of the gate right now. Shop was a really, really good trade today. We had that in the chat room. Big bullish engulfing pattern here. Huge follow through buying today above the major moving averages. Let's overlay that. We'll go into simple moving average 200 and 100 we'll overlay that you can see how it got through the 100 day moving average it's too far out of the gate for us to do a bullish put spread on this right now but in looking at this list so i went through i clicked through some of these stocks i went into relative strength 30 wanted to see what was really looking good today so i used that search and then pop bull which is always a favorite lots and lots of candidates to sift through but you can always reduce the list by clicking on D1, which would mean that the stock is also on a buy signal. I also went through and did a couple of other searches that yielded some good results. And I went into custom search, clicked on option liquidity. I want to see that bigger than a value of three. And then I went into strength versus SPY. I want to see which stocks have weathered the storm well this week on a daily, on a four hour, and on a two hour basis. And I looked through this list right here. And this was really the one that yielded what I think are the better picks. So we went through that list also. And then also look for heavy buying. I want to see heavy buying today. Well, this really narrows the list considerably. So. I've got all the stocks that we're going to be taking a look at. That's how I found them. I wanted to also take a look at bearish stocks. So I did the counterpart here and looked at stocks that were weak relative to the market on heavy volume. These are some nice candidates in here, but we're not going to focus too much on the bearish side. Because if I do that, then you're going to go do bearish trades. We need to see the SPY below 307 before we start doing any more bearish call spreads. The price action right now has been pretty dang bullish. I don't think you want to be on that side of the market at all. I think the bullish put spreads are where we want to be. And I'll go through a couple of these stocks that came up on this list that do set up well for bearish call spreads. But again, that should not be the focus. Here's a real easy way to find stocks that might be setting up for a pullback. Liquid options, heavy volume, Stock below the prior day's low. Huh. Market was up big today. Stock that would be below the prior day's low would be pretty weak. Easy list right in there. I like some of these. In fact, VLO I like a lot. BYND has been just weak as can be. So let's go in and take a look at last week's picks. Then we'll go in and take a look at this week's picks. Let's see how we did. 
Every week I go in and I take a look at all of the picks. I don't take a look at some of them. I'll take a look at all of them. So we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at the November 26 bull. And I only had two stocks that I highlighted in that video, and they were both bullish put spreads. But I did add a couple of other stocks in here because I did highlight them as well in a video that I did on Sunday. BP should not be in here. That was actually a bearish pick. So let's go through the list first of all. Twitter I liked. So Twitter, we had this nice bottoming pattern. One, two, three tests, and then a nice little lift off here. So the deal was we were looking to sell down in here the $30 put spread December 13th expiration and buy the $29.50 put and do that for a credit of $0.10. Cents. We were able to get that and then probably a little bit. The spread is currently trading at about $0.15 cents on the close, so it's moved against us a little bit. But you can see that that $30 support level right in here is holding we still have a week till expiration i would hang on to this and now you can actually draw an upward sloping trend line click gtc if it pokes back below it now and we do get that round of selling in the market you'll want to stop out but you can draw a nice little uptrend here if it's breached get out the other trade that we liked last week was starbucks Starbucks, we like this bottoming process, bottom there, bottom there, finding support at the 200-day moving average. We were selling the December 6th expiration puts, and we were selling the, gosh, I can't recall, but I just looked at the spread. I know that the spread is trading for a penny right now, so that was a nice winner. It was an out-of-the-money spread. The stock has moved higher from last week, and I believe that we were selling right here at the 83.82.50 was the bullish put spread that we were selling. So that was a very nice winner. We also had a bearish pick, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So only two bullish picks. One probably will work out. Starbucks worked out really well. That's going to expire this week. And actually, I've added Starbucks to the list. I think you can sell another bullish put spread right here, keying off of that 200-day moving average. It weathered the storm well this week. I like that. I think that's going to be a nice trade. So we're going to keep that on the list for next week. I did highlight on uh, Sunday, I sent out another video. It was looking for cheap stocks. I posted it so that all of you can see it, so I thought I would highlight those as well. One stock that I liked was APPS, and this is when the video came out on this breakout right here. I had mentioned to you, I said it's not my favorite pick because the stock is pretty choppy and he has a lot of long tails. Typically, I don't like trading stocks with long tails, but this was a nice breakout here, and we've got a generally upward sloping trend line right here, and that breakout has been holding. So I do like it on a longer term basis. We're looking for cheap stocks. It has good volume. You can see these long tails though. What I had mentioned to you was wait for a pullback. You do not need to chase this stock because we can see that it's pretty volatile and pretty choppy intraday. So when you see this, keep that in mind. So if you entered the stock here the next day and it pulled back, then you would be stopped out on this for a small loss. The next stock that I highlighted did really well, AUPH. Look at that baby. We had that marked right here around the $7 level, and that stock is, it closed today around $8.39. Do the math on that. That's a huge return. So that's way better. That's about a 15% uh, return at least. So we've got GTT. Ooh, another nice one. This is a cheap little stock. So I, we needed to get through the 100-day uh, moving average. We needed to close above it, which we did yesterday. And so from just from that close yesterday at 940 to today, the stock closed at uh, about $10 or so. That's a 60-cent winner on a $9 stock. Really, really nice. So good winners. I have VXX here on the bullish list. I had mentioned in my last video, I was buying VXX at 1750. 
exited that that's a nice winner as well you can see this downtrend line was broken we may see option implied volatilities pick up if you are doing bullish put spreads this week and you want to have a little protection i like being long vxx so sell those bullish put spreads on the notion that those stocks will hold up well relative to the market because that's what we're looking for is relative strength and as a hedge buy some vxx how much lower can it go well it probably could go down about 10 percent still be at this price level right here but you'll be protected from any kind of overnight news i.e donald trump comes out and says go pound sand china we don't want to do a trade deal right now i'm going to sign the other bill protecting human rights in china who knows on news like that the market could have another drop that bxx position will help hedge the position a little bit but we are going to be finding really good stocks that should weather the storm well and i'm expecting strength into year end so i'm not overly concerned about it but this is a nice way for you to hedge the position so as option implied volatilities go up and they tend to go up when the market is falling vxx rallies you make money by being long vxx your bearish or your bullish put spreads will take a little bit of heat as the market comes in so the two will offset the, each other and hedge themselves that's how this all works so let's go in and see what I found for today I'm going to go into the December 4 bull list and we've got a lot of candidates in here so I'm not suggesting that you load up I'm simply trying to give you a lot to choose from so let's see what I like with Autodesk Autodesk I like this nice tight upward sloping trend line here you can see how the stock has broken through horizontal resistance after earnings, A, after the close. So it comes back and it tests this breakout right in here and it bounces. This stock wants to move higher. It had good volume after earnings. You would sell right here around the 172 strike price. We want that breakout to hold. So you would sell your bullish put spread below that 172.50 price level expecting that price level to hold i like it it's not too far out of the gate so it's still good advm i don't think this is going to be a particularly good bullish put spread to sell but i do like the stock i like this really nice tight pattern in here i like this rally above the 100 day moving average this stock looks like it wants to continue to grind higher so i do like it starting to fill in this gap right here very very strong powerful move so you're a swing trader well gee how do I know when to take profits on something like this you click GTC don't pick a really steep trend line like that or you'll get stopped out right away try and find something that's nice and gradual like maybe that bar right there and maybe that bar right there now you've got a tiny little upward sloping trend line as the stock continues to grind higher your stop will move higher in the form of that alert. You log into your computer, do your aftermarket analysis. One day there's a pop-up window that says, hey, ADVM, you might ADVM, you might want to get out of this one. You just get a pop-up alert. So that's how you manage the trades. These diagonal alert lines are awesome. So just to recap, ADVM, going to go back to that one I like buying the stock in here lean on that 100 day moving average you can also lean on that trend line if you want to be a little bit more passive and have a closer stop AMRN really like this one didn't want it to rally like it did today because when it was just grind grind grinding higher in here I already had it pegged for a nice bullish put spread but now uh, we need a little bit of a pullback to get a decent credit on it. So what are we going to do with this one? Here we're going to click that and that. That's our uptrend line. We want this to hold. That's our horizontal breakout. You can key off of the 2160 level. I'd probably go down to about the $20 level because we want this trend line to hold. So sell the $21 put in December by maybe the 2050 put. I like the stock, big volume, really nice volume in here. It had to check that rally 
buyers are still there you can see by the long tails underbody and the stock is moving higher weathered the storm yesterday really well on the initial market decline and on monday as well so that's relative strength that's you can see that it dipped below the zero line here on the relative strength because of this drop right here but if you look at the price action monday monday we had a big market sell off with the stock do nice held all of its gains tuesday we had that reversal off of the low bullish hammer on the spy stock closes near its high today we got a positive day in the market boom really like amrn bby why do i like that got this nice breakout through horizontal resistance stock rallies like mad on the news pulls back with the market checks that breakout i think that breakout's going to be firm i think it's going to hold around the 77 dollar level that's where i would sell that bullish put spread is using the 77 dollar strike stock closes below it got to shut her down Disney, a lot of excitement with their streaming media right now. We've got this nice horizontal breakout right here. The stock checks it a couple of times, rallies up. Now we've got a market drop, checks it again. Everything's intact. So I like selling that bullish put spread right here around the $147 level. You've also got a nice little upward sloping trend line right here that you can draw. We want to see that preserved. We expect the stock to continue to move higher with the market. So we're going fairly close to the money on these. Option premiums are still pretty cheap. So to get a decent credit, you have to go close to the money. My suggestion is try and sell them as close to expiration as you can. So try not to go out three or four or five weeks. Try and stick with the one week, the weekly options. Go out two weeks if you need to. Keep it kind of close to the money so that you can reel those back in if market conditions start to deteriorate. But from now into year end, I see the market as being pretty bullish. We should have some good news coming up. DKS, DIX, really nice breakout through horizontal resistance. We've got a bit of a compression in here. Stock rallies up, gives up some of the gains, comes and checks half of the green candle right here, finds support. I think that you can sell a bullish put spread using that opening price right here on this long candle, the $44 strike price. If the stock goes below $44, you got to shut her down because then she's going to come back and fill in the gap. If she does fill in the gap, it'll be another nice one right here at the $41, $42 level, let's call it. INSG. I like this chart a lot. This is not a bullish put spread candidate. This is just a cheap stock that I think will do well. You can see the big volume. Lots of closes on these green bars near the high of the bar. So I like this on any kind of pullback. This $6 level is your stop out point right here. But I think this stock's got a nice head of steam. It can continue to move higher. MS. Got a nice breakout. We have a compression. It's holding this breakout right here. It checks it right here. I think that you can sell a bullish put spread using that $47.50 dollar strike price that low right there if that low is given up you got to shut the trade down otherwise i'm expecting it to chop around and tread water into your end pdco saw that today really like this one got this horizontal breakout right here it's above the 100 day moving average nice positive price action good relative strength you can see the volume here as well poke through the 200 day moving average I'd want to see it put in a couple days above that 200-day moving average before I sell a bullish put spread keying off of that. But I think you can be a little bit more conservative and use these tops right here and this breakout. So I would sell probably around the $19.50 or the $19 strike price if you can get any kind of decent credit for it there. Starbucks we've already taken a look at. That was our pick from last week. It's still drifting down and hovering around that 200-day moving average. I think you can sell another bullish put spread on it. It held up well this week. It's down near the low end of its trading range, so I like that also. I did want to mention, when you go into the scanner, I went in and I took a look at strong after earnings. And this is a great search that you can use. That's how I found Best Buy box. It's saying is also strong. 
That's also another one that's below that 200-day moving average. It's testing that horizontal breakout. So I'm going to keep an eye on box, and you know I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw a couple of alert lines here. Actually, I'm going to draw one alert line. I'm going to draw it there, and I'm going to connect it there. This will come down. It'll be gradually sloping, very gradually sloping. But I'll know if the stock breaks out above it. If I want to be a little bit more aggressive with it, I can come in and I can click on that and that. And now that line will be even steeper. And I'll know if the stock breaks out above it. As soon as it hits that 200-day moving average and starts to gain traction, I'll know about it and I can decide if I want to do the trade. What I don't like about it today is that we had a nice market rally and the stock finished on its low and it finished below the 200-day moving average. So um, just a little additional technical analysis for you. If I go into the bearish list, I can also see week after earnings. These are some weak stocks, FL. There's your earnings before the open, stock sells off, breaches the 100-day moving average, tries to rally up, tries to get up to that 100-day moving average, cannot. Even with a market rally, yesterday and today, the stock is drifting lower. This is a weak stock. Uh, sell a bearish call spread around that 100-day moving average? Yeah, maybe. PANW, uh, this is finding support at that 200-day moving average, so it may set up for a Good bullish put spread, but I think you got to give it more time because right now we don't know if the stock is going to stage another leg lower or if it's going to start to fill in this gap. If we wanted to, from a day trading basis, I would still want to know if it's able to get through this price level. So there's a little bit of an upward sloping trend line. It's going to have to really work to get through it. If it does, it's going to start to fill in some of this gap, and I know for sure I'll be able to day trade it. So I do like that. DE was pretty nice for one reason today on a day trading basis. It checks the 200-day moving average. It po pokes above the 100-day moving average. So we made a little money trading net from the long side today. Still got work to do on the downside. And I do not like selling bullish put spreads on any cyclical stock right now in case that U.S.-China trade deal does not go through. I think those will be the first stocks to get hit along with Chinese stocks. So I would avoid cyclicals for bullish put spreads right now. I am going to go in and take a look at our bearish list, and then we're going to conclude our session this evening. I think I've given you a lot to look at already. We're going to go into lists, and we're going to go and take a look at the bearish list for December 4th. And Oracle, nasty little drop. You can hover over the last candle, this E, and that gives you the next earnings date, which is on 12-16. So we've got earnings coming up. You might be able to sneak one bearish call spread in there but you can see how the stock hits resistance long red candles breaking through major moving averages this stock is weak there's your relative weakness and there's your volume this stock is probably going to head lower vlo we were short this a couple of weeks ago really starting to crown roll over right here lots of red candles closing on their low bearish pattern Horizontal breakout right here. That support over here. Now the support has been breached. I think VLO goes lower. So that would be a good bearish call spread. And this is a choppy stock. You can see by these long tails. It does tend to move. So I would wait for a little bit of a rally and try to sell a 97.50 bearish call spread. So that's it for the week. But I do want to. So we got a lot of picks that we're going to be reviewing next week. Half. You should think in terms of half. Don't get overly aggressive this week. Sell some bullish put spreads. Leave some firepower in case the market does roll over a little bit. We've got some long tails. We should have some support here. As long as you're picking the right stocks that have big technical support below, look for that relative strength. You should be fine because these stocks want to lead the charge higher. And we're simply looking to bide some time here for the next two or three weeks. If we do that, our bullish put spreads will expire and we'll generate really nice income in the meantime. So again, those of you who are YouTube subscribers, please subscribe to this channel. You never know what I'm going to be posting. I could throw in a nice swing trading video or two. But for sure, I'm posting my daily videos and I'm going to continue to do that. So they'll be filled with lots of great picks.